Hi, I'm Garth McKenzie from traderscorner.co.za. This is your weekly look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indices. So as always, I start the analysis with a look at the S&P 500 daily chart to see what's happening over there. What you can see recently is that this market has been fairly range bound. Down at the lower levels, we've got 41.20, which has been acting as support. And that level coincides with the 15-day exponential moving average, which is a moving average I follow quite closely for short-term trading action. And then at the upper end, we've got 41.90, which has been containing the trading action at the upper level. It just hasn't quite been able to reach up to that 4,200 round figure. But with futures looking firmer at the time of recording, it does look as if we might still see a pop up to 4,200. And I think if it breaks out above 4,200, then it possibly opens another little squeeze to the upside. So overall, still a bullish bias environment here, whilst that market is above that 4,120 level. And um, we continue to look for higher prices as long as 4,120 holds. If 4,120 were to break to the downside, then I think we could see the market heading back down towards about 4,020, where there's actually a little gap in the chart. So we'll have to monitor those ranges range boundaries quite clearly in the week ahead. Then if we move on to the hourly chart of the S&P 500, there you can see the range that I've talked about in a little bit more clearly. Um, 41.20 is the bottom of that range, as you can see where the price has been uh, met with buying interest down at the bottom. And then at the upper end, 41.90, where we've seen the recent highs. You can see that Friday's final candle last week was a brief push above that 41.90 level, and then a little bit of a reversal on the hourly chart. So let's see, that range remains intact for now, and we'd need to see the market break convincingly above 41.90. 90 to then open up that round figure at 4200 and quite possibly up towards about 4250 4260 that sort of area if the market were to break to the upside as i said 4120 is important support at the lower levels and we've got to watch that that support holds because if it were to break to the downside then it opens up some lower targets at the lower levels right then let's take a look at the nasdaq and here we're taking a look first of all at the daily chart also a little bit messy in the last two weeks or so, uh, range bound really between 13,700 and the round figure at 14,000 has been pretty sticky at the upper levels. Uh, that market remains stuck in that range for the time being, and we'd need to probably see a convincing move above 14,000 to open any further gains. And if 13,700 were to break to the downside, then that might open weakness down towards 13,300 again, which is where that breakout occurred in the beginning of April. Lastly, then, let's have a look at the hourly chart of the NASDAQ. And there you can see that trading range more clearly. 13,750 or so there is the, is the bottom of that range, as I mentioned. At the top, we've got 14,050. So your round figures here are, are 14,000 at the upper level and about 13,700 down at the bottom. And the market would need to break out of that range in either direction to open the next move. So above 14,000 and convincingly above 14,050 would probably be needed to then open further gains, uh, maybe towards a 14,500 target. On the other hand, a breakdown below 13,700 would then see the market heading down towards 13,300. So overall, still quite a range bound environment now for both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We'll have to watch those range boundaries that I've mentioned in both of those charts uh, quite clearly in the week ahead. Possible that the range stays intact ahead of the Fed meeting on Wednesday, and then maybe we get some sort of movement after that. That's all I've got for you this week. I'll be back again next week with another look at both of these indices.